As many of you know, ImageJ is a very powerful and user-friendly tool that's applied for image analysis. This can be expanded with hundreds of plugins. However, there is one catch here, namely that transforming such an analysis into an automated workflow then requires experience in a macro programming language. And lots of additional work will be involved in detecting the file inputs, as well as keeping track of the data during the whole analysis and, of course, writing the results. An alternative to this processing are visual programming languages. These allow anyone to just design a flowchart of the processing steps, whereas the language itself will take care of all the technical details. JIPipe provides such a user-friendly visual language designed for ImageJ. Our example that we show here will go through the analysis of a typical biological experiment where imaging is used to track the interaction of macrophages and fungal spores. The processing will start with importing the images and then carrying out some pre-processing. In the next step, we will then identify the fungal spores and then we will carry out the rough segmentation of macrophages followed by post-processing. And finally, we will identify those spores that are actually inside the macrophages. Now, we will start with importing the image into ImageJ. We will use the file open command to find the image and then to load it into ImageJ. Here, we loaded a native format confocal microscopy image, which contains four channels. ImageJ provides a simple way to separate these channels. For this demonstration, we are only interested in the transmitted light and the green channels. This concludes the first step of the analysis in ImageJ, so let's now switch over to JIPipe and let's see how it's done there. Similarly to ImageJ, we can drag and drop the selected image onto the user interface. This image file is now represented by a node a node can be selected, dragged and repositioned with the mouse. After selecting a node, on the right side we will find the parameters characteristic of this particular node, for example the file path of this image. This file path then appears on the output of the node. We now have to convert our file path into an image, which is then accomplished by another node called import image. You will find all available nodes via the menu or the search bar. If you are not familiar with the JIPipe nodes, you can use the algorithm finder. This will list all the compatible processing steps for a specific output. This list will then reveal all the available options. And as you see, already the top choice is the one that we wanted, the import image node. And then when we click on the arrow bar, it will automatically also connect this new node to the previous one. In the next step, we have to split the channels, which is, of course, executed by another node. We look for this using the algorithm finder. We type split, and this will give us the first match, again automatically connecting the two nodes. For the sake of flexibility, the channel splitter node allows us to fully customize which channels are extracted. By default, it comes without any outputs. In order to add the new output, we click on the plus sign. This opens a new window, and as you can see here, you can choose the data type and you can choose a name for the new output as well. For the first edit channel, we will choose the name Transmitted Light, TL, and then we click on the Add button to add it to the output. At the end, you can see the new output now fully equipped with a name and a data type. And now we repeat the same steps for the green channel. Finally, we have to specify which input channel from the incoming image belongs to what output slot. This is accomplished by assigning the appropriate numbers to the channel assignment panel, as you see on the right side. JIPipe conveniently includes a feature that allows to process the pipeline up to a selected node and store the results into a memory cache. To make use of this feature, one only has to right-click on the node and then run Update Cache. This will then display all the results in a table. In order to visualize any of the results, you have to simply double-click on an entry and this will open the result. 
This now concludes the image loading and channel splitting in Jipipe. And now let's continue with the extraction of the green spores in image J. We start the processing with background correction using the rolling ball method with a 22 pixel radius. And then we continue with global thresholding. Here we will choose the triangle method and then we apply the global thresholding. In the thresholded image then we want to remove the remaining holes from the object. And then in order to separate the touching spores we will use a classical watershed algorithm. Now we have a binary image on which we can apply the analyze particles function from image J. This will identify the objects in the certain parameter range including size and circularity. Here we chose the values of 100 pixels for the minimum size, 3000 pixels for the maximum size and 0.4 for the minimum circularity in order to focus our attention on the spores and not on other objects in the image. This image contains the outline of each spore. We can use it to create an overlay. The image will then be inverted first, and then we use the merge channel command to generate the overlay image. Here we will select the gray image to be the original one, and the green image to be the outline that we just created with the particle finder. And now we have the transmitted light image with the spores outlined in green. After this, let us now switch back to Jipipe and carry out the same steps of the processing as we showed you for image J. As you remember, we are processing the green output from the split channels node. And first we want to subtract the background. If you remember, we did this in image J using the rolling ball method using 22 pixel radii. As you remember here, then we have to select the node and then look on the right side and here we can change the parameters choose the method and then choose the radius as 22. As we did in image J, now we look for an auto thresholding method using a different node called auto threshold. And here, once we added the new node to the graph, we can look on the right side again and set up the parameters and set it to triangle method. As you remember, the next step here was the hole filling of the binary image. We can find this by a search for the word hole filling and then this way we will get another new node in the graph. Similarly to the previous step, we can simply find the next step, which is the watershed algorithm, by a simple search, and this will add yet another node to our workflow. As you remember, next we use the analyze particle function in image J. This is called slightly differently in JPipe. It's named Find Particles 2D. And then we select that and then we set the parameters exactly the same way as we did in image J using the same values for the size and the circularity threshold values. Let us now generate an overlay just like we did in image J. For this we have established a special node in JPipe and I will show you how to find this using the search bar. First you place your cursor where you want the new node to appear and then you type the search command into the bar as shown in the video. As you see, this node requires two inputs. One of them is a list of regions, that's the ROI input, and the other one is a reference image on which the overlay will appear. Here we make the connection between the output and the input using the mouse. When the line turns green, then the connection is established. We make the second connection via an alternative way that is revealed when you click on the arrow of the slot. Here again the edge will turn green when the connection is valid. In order to see the final outcome, let's run the update cache command and as you see now we have the overlay between the two images. So now we are ready to analyze the macrophages. For this one we return to the ImageJ platform. At first we switch back to the transmitted light image and then apply one step of sharpening. Because the macrophages were actually not labeled fluorescently, we have to use a little trick, namely by applying a so-called Hessian filter. What this does is it calculates the second derivative on the spatial plane and this will then reveal those objects which are surrounded by a curved outline. And this is exactly what the macrophages are. 
So by applying the Hessian filter with the radius of 3 pixels, we will be able to generate a contrast which will emphasize the location of each individual macrophage. Here we will only use the smallest eigenvalue images and we will apply a 5 pixel Gaussian blur filter. In the next step we generate a binary image by using a global thresholding, namely the Huang method. We now have a roughly thresholded image for the macrophages. And now let's go back to JPipe and let's see how we do it in that platform. Here we again start with the transmitted light image and this we do by selecting the TL output from the split channel node. Similar to image J, we will now sharpen the image. There is a corresponding node established in JPipe. We will find this with the search method and add it. JPipe also has a Hessian filter node, so we will add this to the workflow. We now select this node and in the parameter settings on the right side, we choose the smallest eigenvalue image and we set the radius to 3 pixels. Next, we will need a Gaussian filtering node, so we will find this using the search bar. And once we located the necessary node, we will add it to the workflow and connect it to the previous node. In the parameter tab, then we change the radius to 5 pixels. As we have seen before, we can here add an auto thresholding node and connect it to the Gaussian blur output. The last step is then to configure this node to use the Huang method. This concludes the JPipe workflow to generate the rough segmentation of the macrophages. And now we go back to image J. We now go to the roughly segmented binary image. And first we apply a closing algorithm using a disk element and two pixels of radius. Next we will fill the remaining holes in the image. The image still contains unnecessary small elements which are not macrophages and we will remove them now using the remove outliers command. First we set the threshold to 20 and then the radius to 10 pixels. This will remove the smallest objects and then we repeat this same procedure that is using the remove outliers, but now we will use a 20 pixel radius. Next we will separate the clustered macrophages and here we use as before the watershed algorithm. In order to separate the macrophages better we will use an erosion step and here we will use the disk element again and the radius will be set to 2 pixels. In order to find the actual macrophages, we will use the Analyze Particles command. Here we will set the size and the circularity range according to, as we discussed before, the minimum size will be 3000, which was the maximum size of these spores, if you remember, and the circularity will be set to 0.1 because macrophages are not as circular as the spores. Let us now create an overlay image as we did before. So for this we will invert the outline image and then overlay it with the transmitted light image using the merge channels command. Here the gray channel will be the transmitted light image and the red channel will be the outline. At the end we will have the overlay image plus a region of interest list which is basically the individual macrophages. Now let's carry out the same processing but in JPipe. We now need to continue with some morphological operations. As you remember, in image J, we used MorpholibJ J for this purpose. In JPipe, we established a corresponding node named Morphological Operators 2D. We again choose the parameters for this node, closing operator, disk element, and two pixels radius. Next, we connect a morphological hole filling node, also provided by JPipe. JPipe also has an equivalent node for the remove outliers command. We will add this to the workflow and connect it to the previous node. We then set up the parameters this to the same values as in image J. Since we need to repeat this step, we will use the copy and paste command to make a second copy of this node. Because the parameters were also copied, we only need to change the radius to 20. Just like we did for the spores, we separate the macrophages with a watershed algorithm by adding the necessary node to the workflow. Then we add another morphological operation node. This we will use to erode the images. 
And then on the right side we set up the parameters, so we choose erosion, we select the radius, and then we are done. The next step of the workflow was finding the particles, so we applied the now well-known node from JPipe. We connect it to the morphological operator node, as we did before, and we set up the parameters, including the particle size, minimum and maximum, as well as the circularity minimum value. Finally, to finish this part of the processing, we will generate an overlay image. This is very easy in JPipe, as we have seen before. We add the node, and then we connect the region of interest from the white particle and we choose a reference image. At the end we will see the outcome when we run the update cache and as you see now we have the overlay. And now comes the final phase of the analysis. We will determine those spores which are actually inside the macrophages. As we briefly mentioned before, the Analyze Particles command in ImageJ actually saves the regions of interest which correspond to the segmented objects. As a result of our processing, we now have these regions both for the macrophages and for the spores, and later we will compare them to determine those spores which are inside the macrophages. Because ImageJ only has one region of interest list, we have to accomplish this task in two steps. In the first step, we will select all the regions which correspond to the macrophages, then we merge them using the OR command and then we save this new merged region of interest as a new entry into the region of interest list. After the merging procedure, it is now possible to save the region of interest list into a file. In the next step, we add the regions of interest for the spores and similarly to the macrophages, we will merge them. The combined ROI for the spores can also be saved into a file, just like we showed before. In order now to be able to see the inside spores, we will select the two merged regions, one for the macrophages and one for the spores. And on these two files, we will now run the end command. This will select those spores which are inside the macrophages. Now switching between the two sets back and forth, we'll clearly visualize which spores are inside and which spores are outside the macrophage. This is the final result of our demo analysis, so let's save them to the hard drive. Finally, we demonstrate the region of interest comparison in JPipe. Naturally, JPipe can also offer the same steps that we followed in ImageJ when comparing two sets of regions of interest. However, we implemented a much more convenient node, and I would like to demonstrate how to use this to solve this particular problem. This purpose-designed node is called Filter Roy by Overlap, and as you see, it contains by default two inputs and two outputs. The output with the corresponding name, for example, ROI1, will contain those input regions from ROI1 input that overlaps with at least one pixel in the ROI2 input. The same is, of course, also true for ROI2. All of the inputs and outputs can, of course, be fully customized. As an example, let's first change the name of the ROI1. For this, first we select the node, then we select the entry, and then we click on Edit. This opens a new window where we have the chance to change the name. In this case, we name it Green. After the confirmation of the transaction, the updated node will appear on the workflow. Then we carry out the same steps for the other slot, for the macrophages. Since the names of the input and output slots must agree, as we discussed, we have an extra tool to customize these slots. Namely, we can use labels. Here we label those spores that overlap with the macrophages as inside spores. We can now see that whereas the apparent name changed in the node, the actual name behind it remained the same. Now that we are done setting up the node, we can connect the corresponding regions of interest, one of them from the macrophages and the other one from the spores. Now we reach the same endpoint of the analysis that we had before in ImageJ. However, JPipe offers much more flexibility in processing this data, so now we would like to show you a couple of examples for this. One such flexibility tool is provided by the so-called overlap filter, which can be programmed with mathematical expressions. 
Here we will use the condition that at least half of the spore area will overlap with the macrophage. Finally, let us visualize the outcome the usual way as we have done before. Let us connect the proper regions of interest and the reference image, and then we have the overlay of the inside spores and the macrophages. After running update cache, we can now clearly see those spores which are not inside macrophages, these are not outlined, versus those which are inside macrophages, they are outlined in yellow. Let us now extract some statistical properties of these regions of interest. There is a special node for that in JPipe. We will connect this one to the ROI output. After that, let's also plot some of these statistical results. We use the node plot tables for this purpose. We use a histogram plot for the mode. And then we select the area to be plotted. When we click Update Cache, JPipe will generate the output, which is a histogram in this case. Naturally, by selecting the Extract ROI node, you will have also access to the output table of the statistical measurements of these spores or macrophages. This now concludes our analysis in JPipe. We thank you for watching our demonstration. We hope you liked it. You can find much more information about JPipe on its website. And at the end, let's take a look at the complete set of nodes in JPipe as we created in this demonstration. <music>